let's look at how to solve uh, a problem uh, I just mentioned about a steam pipe 100 degrees Celsius in the middle of well steam pipe radius is A and we wrap a layer of insulating material um, the thickness obviously is a B minus A because that is um, th this part this is this part that is B minus A so if inside is 100 degrees Celsius and outside 20 degrees air the question is what kind of power that has been transmitted I'm saying we say losing um, due to this um, situation okay so what we want is P how do we deal with this problem if we view this from the top uh, let's take a look this is the steam pipe we view from top okay and this is the inner radius A and then that is the insulating layer if we cut a layer right in here how far R distance away from the center and this layer is dr so the question is how much heat will be transmitted through this layer during delta t second and we say that is um depends on what this layer this is the insulating material so that's k of uh insulating material the conductivity anyway so it's proportional to that material and proportional to cross-section area right now heat flows around the radius direction so the cross-section area means the side area of this cylindrical object so that is 2 pi r tom l l is the height of that so that is the uh, cross-section area k cross-section of delta t delta t is actually the temperature change across this layer let's have dt and the thickness of this is dr okay so that is the power has been transmitted that equals to um, a constant we say why because as I explained once the temperature gradient established T is a function of R every one second the power past each layer must be same how much past the first layer must pass second layer no heat will be built up at any layer so it's constant so in this case we're going to um, as a matter of fact to rearrange everything now, if you look at this constant 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 so if we reverse this we have dr over r how do we get that reciprocal and the other side will have this equals to dr over r the other side if we mathematically do this this is R over dr initially. The other side initially has a P, but we're going to throw this constant, which is 2 pi and L and the K and also dt, everybody, to the other side. We get that. So for reciprocal, have d of R, that will give us that dt on the top. That will be 2 pi k l d t n over p. It's like that. So, since these are constants, and if we do the integral from a to b, then the temperature at a is t of steam. Temperature at b is t of the room. So we get natural log that natural log b minus natural log a is this equals to 2 pi k l p of temperature t of room minus t of that steam now i want to mention this temperature room is less than temperature steam this is a negative term but everything else looks like positive why because b is more than a this is a positive so as a matter of fact do you remember at the very beginning actually we have something like um, P equals to <clears throat> that K A of absolute value DT over DX 
So if we want to get rid of this absolute value, actually it's negative Ka dt over dx. Why is that? Because if dx direction is our dr direction, if it's a positive, and dt drops, that is negative. So we need to add a negative sign. So we need to add a negative sign here. Then it will balance left and right. So this gives us if p equals to, if we want to p, that will be if we put this negative sign into here, then we have 2 pi kl, which is t steam minus t room, and natural log b of a. Okay. So look at this. Steam, this is a, <clears throat> a room temperature. The difference, well, if we talk about different, it doesn't matter with Celsius or Kelvin, it's the same. So if everything, we have to look for the units for this conductivity. If SI unit, then we here we use Kelvin. And this is length, uh, this is meter. And K is given in certain units because K has to balance the equation. And so we can find, if we fill in this, and then we can find the power that lost due to the temperature difference. There's one more question we can ask, actually it's very interesting, that if we want to cut the power into half, how much percent of the insulating layer that we have to increase? Okay, here's the P we got. If we want to decrease P to half, what does that mean? Now we have a new P, which is half of we cut 50% power loss, the original. So it requires, well, the same kind of insulating material, the same, we we'll talk about same length of that pipe. The T steam over T of room is still be the same. Only something is the new B, because the pipe, steam pipe size A is still the same. It is the B value. So it is quite, easy to do that because um, what we do is uh, we just it's one half P we just need to plug in this P as that and as you can see everything will cancel because you see if we have one half original P is 2 pi KL TS over T room and this is original B over A equals to that is the original power loss. When we cut the one half is the new one. The new one has the same wrapping material and lengths and inside outside temperature but just has a newbie. So everything cancels. This cancel, that cancel. So what we have is um, as a matter of fact this two is down there. So it's like two the original B over A equals to the new B over A and that actually is this equals to that right and so this gives us if B over A equals to B over A of square so the new B equals to one of A cancels and that will give us the old B square over A. And that is a lot, the new B, because it's the old B squared divided by A. And we can fill in the number. For example, let's have a case. A equal to 5 cm, for example. B equals to uh, 10 cm. Let's say the steam pipe radius is 5. We wrap layer thickness is 5. And now, if we plug in that, it is 10 square over 5. So the 100 divided by 5, that's 20. So this tells us the new layer now is 15 centimeters. Why? Because look, A is the radius of steam pipe. Originally, the B is 10 centimeters. The difference B minus A is the thickness of the wrapping material, that is 5 cm. Now the new B minus steam pipe is still the same size, come on 15 cm, which means the thickness of the layer 
that we wrap around a steam pipe has to be 15 centimeters. So we have to triple the thickness in order to cut the power loss by 50%. Let's look at one more problem. Vice layer formed um, on the surface of a pond. And uh, let's say initially this is thickness of the ice is already for being formed. The air has a temperature negative 10 degrees Celsius, very cold. And underneath the ice, the temperature of the water is zero. So it's the water is ready to freeze. Let's assume that this layer of dy is going to uh, freeze. Okay. So what happened is the heat actually is sneaking out this way because zero degrees water freeze, release heat, and it will pass. This is a high temperature. This is a lower temperature. So according to what we learned, that is uh, K. K is ice because that is the conducting layer. That's that. Um, A is the size of the ice that is arbitrary. And we have this the change of temperature. In this case, uh, dt, if we use dt and dx, if we use that one, this is a case actually pretty clear cut. One side is um, zero, the other side negative 10 degrees Celsius. So we can actually use that K ice A of delta T over, now the thickness actually we better just name, mm, this is Y. This layer is just Y, That's like that. So this is a power transmitted, how? By a layer of dy freezing. So that is latent heat of fusion time cross-section area time dy. That A time dy give volume. Volume, we must time density. This density of water because H2O, um, this is mass, mass time at the infusion, that is the heat release that equals to, I mean, divided by the time, dt. So by freezing dy layer of water, it takes dt second, this is how much heat is transferred. Now in this case, let's look at it. If we define going down is positive, say, then dy is positive. But the other side, let's take a look. Delta T, you have to make sure delta T is positive. So we have to use that high temperature minus low temperature. Okay. So in this case, if we ask this question, originally, if we already have four centimeters ice layer, now how long does it take to get another four centimeters. So the final is 8.0 cm. That means we have, we double the thickness of the ice. We ask for how long does it take? So we want the time. Well, it's pretty simple. Let's take a look. That is constant. That cancel with this. K of ice is constant, right? This is a constant because the difference, the temperature is zero, negative 10 degrees constant. So let heat diffusion constant. So it's only between dy and y dt, but be very careful. This layer dy is about water because we talk about water freeze, but that y is the initial y of ice. So this is ice. Y of ice and y of water is different because when water freeze, it's the same amount of dy of water will expand. So we have to be very careful. There is effect of the density of ice and density of water. So if we want to get a time, dt, we move dt to the other side. Everything else will combine. If dt go to the other side, we have L, latent heat diffusion. A get is gone, density of H2O. Okay. And then we have this um, Y of ice comes along and the K of ice goes here 
and delta t goes here and we have this dy right here so it looks like if we want the total time we just do the summation and summation y start from if y initial to y final so the only problem now is we have to convert because this is ice this is water so dy of water over dy of ice what do you think it expands right so that is density of ice it expands so the thick this is thicker so that's density of water that there is uh, something like that then you can convert this dy this dy is actually dy of water then you can convert to dy of ice then we can do the integral so that's initial of ice thickness final of ice thickness and we can find the total t which is from here very interesting now the other two kinds of heat transfer one is called convection the other is called radiation convection defines the energy transferred by the movement of a warm substance for example that if we um, heat um, a puddle of water let's say we have a keto put on a hot plate uh, when we warm up the bottom layer of water it expand and get less dense it will just flow to the top cause a circulation and the cold water will sink to the bottom and continues so this is called convection because right now heat or say energy transferred by the movement of a warm substance now the movement of warm substance indicating the movement of material same thing about um, air warm air rise so if we warm up the cold air and air expand density get less and it floats and then it rise to the top and cold air sink and this cause convection that actually the movement will feel the motion of the air that is wind so that is convection another kind of uh, heat transfer is called radiation that for example if we sit next to a fireplace and burning some wood and we will feel warm and we get the heat reached our body by through radiation and say for example if the fireplace has a temperature of T and then the power being radiated is proportional to the surface area and also depends on the type of the source this E is called emissivity and for a ideal absorber what is it it's a black body which means every incident of energy on this object it will absorb as a whole thing nothing reflect that's called ideal absorber nothing reflect from optical point of view nothing goes back to your eye you don't see anything that's black that's called black that's why I call black body black body black body equal to one a ideal reflector which means it reflect hundred percent of what incident a point on the surface that e equal to zero so if we talk about a black body that e will be one so sometimes the most of the source e is between zero and one and this sigma is a constant so basically it says the power transmitted is proportional to the temperature to the force that is called Stefan's law and the heat has been transferred in the way of what we call electromagnetic waves and this part of electromagnetic heat if electromagnetic waves in the heat range that is infrared so that is the third way of heat transfer that is uh, radiation 